Today I'm going to be showing you how to make James Bond's Day of the Dead costume from the movie Spectre. So let's get into it. So this is a costume that I built a little while ago and I actually started with one of these cheap pirate masks from a dollar store. What I initially did is took off this little tassel here, just break that away. I took a rotary tool and I ground those off and then using an oil-based sculpting clay I started to sculpt over including sculpting in these missing teeth. So I went further and ended up actually covering the entire mask in sculpting clay and making my modifications over the entire thing. But the base mask was still really useful for keeping some of the shape and symmetry and it was a really good guide for sculpting over. And once the sculpture was complete, I used a technique where you take a flame, I used a cigarette lighter, and you run the flame over the surface of the clay and it actually starts to melt the outer surface and give you a really smooth finish. So once my sculpture was complete, the next step is to pull a silicon mold from the sculpture. So I poured three layers of silicon over the top of it, letting each one dry in between. And then if we were to peel that silicon off, it would be too flexible to actually use. So it needs to have a rigid jacket called a mother mold on the outside. So over the top of the last layer of silicon, once it had dried, I put plaster bandages to create a rigid mother mold. So now that everything's set, we can remove the mother mold from our silicon negative peel that silicon negative off our master and now you can lay your silicon back inside the rigid plaster jacket and it gives us a stable mold that we can now pour our resin into. So for this we're going to use polyurethane resin and the resin I use is a one-to-one -one mix so I'm going to use around about 20 grams of part A and part B. I just combine the two halves together mix them together thoroughly and the beauty of the polyurethane resin is it sets really quickly so all we have to do is coat the inside of the mould. I'm going to just pour that in. And roll it around. Once we've got a nice even coating inside the mould, we can just keep that mould rotating until the resin starts to thicken. And then we end up with a nice uniform coat. Whereas if we just left it on the bench like that, all the resin would run down into the bottom of the mould and it would end up with a lot more resin thickness in the front of the features and very little up around the sides. The resin's now set and we've got a nice consistent layer on the inside. So next we can go and mix up another batch of resin, pour that in, roll it around until it's set and we can repeat that process until we've got four layers in total. So now that our fourth and final layer of resin has dried, one thing that you do sometimes find when you're pouring a mask is that you can look inside and see details around the sharper, higher points. And you can actually see a little bit of the blue silicon showing through. This mask isn't too bad, but some masks that have a lot of sharp details, the resin seems to wash over those sharp corners and it doesn't build up as much of a thickness in those spots. So the easy way to deal with that is mix a small amount of resin in your cup, let it set until it's just starting to thicken, and you've got a window of around about 30 seconds once it starts to thicken where you can actually use your mixing stick and just dab it onto those areas where you can see the blue showing through, and that will just build up a really good thick layer just in those spots so you don't end up with any weak spots in your mask. So once our resin's dry, we can remove the mother mold and then carefully peel away the silicon negative to reveal the resin mask. So the next step is going to be to clean up the mask. I'm going to use a rotary tool to clean up around the edges. I'm going to cut out the eye sockets and also the part in between the teeth. Now that we've got our mask all trimmed and painted with a white gloss base coat, we're ready to start putting on all the black details. Now for this, I like to use some cheap art paintbrushes, just disposable ones, and a can of gloss black spray paint. And what I do is spray a little bit of the black paint into the lid, and then using the brushes, we can start to apply that straight out of the lid.
the next thing we need to do is make a little design choice. The mask that James Bond wore in Spectre covered his forehead. But what that means is that when you put on your top hat, you're going to need a top hat that's bigger than your normal size to accommodate for the extra thickness of the mask. Now, I didn't want to do that because the top hat that I bought, I wanted to be able to use in future costumes as well. So what I did was got a top hat that fits me and then I trimmed the top of the mask off where it would meet the brim of the top hat. So then the next thing is how to actually attach the mask to your face. Now in the film they had temples off a pair of sunglasses. They attached them with resin onto the inside of the mask so that James Bond could just clip it straight over his ears. But I decided to go with some elastic instead to make it a little bit more comfortable to wear. So I just got some round elastic and used some resin to join it onto the inside of the mask on both sides and now it sits comfortably. Now make sure you leave enough elastic that it's not going to sit too tight against your face because one of the problems with this mask, because there's no nose, it tends to push quite hard against your nose which can be quite painful. So what I did is on the inside I put some squares of foam just on either side of the nose and on the chin and that just helps hold it away from my face enough that there's no pressure on the front of my nose. So make sure your elastic is as loose as you can make it while still having the mask stay in the right place. Now for the costume, what James Bond actually wears is called a frock coat. It looks like a suit jacket, but it goes right down past the knees. Now something like that in New Zealand is just not available, so I had to improvise. So after a lot of research, I found that the closest I could actually buy here in New Zealand was a black lab coat. So I bought one of those, it wasn't particularly expensive, and I was able to remove the logo off it. And the shape of the lab coat was pretty good, but the lapel looks like a lab coat. It doesn't look like a suit jacket. So what I ended up actually doing was going and buying a suit jacket from a thrift shop and cutting the lapel off, throwing away the jacket, and then taking the lab coat and cutting the lapel off that and stitching the lapel off the suit jacket onto the lab coat. And that gave me the look that I was after. So once I had the frock coat made, the next step was to use my reference photos as a guide and draw on the bones so that I could paint them. So what I did is I drew them on with a piece of chalk. Now I'm going to put up a picture of the front and back of the Spectre suit so you can go back and pause it and use it as a reference yourself. But all we need to do is draw on the bone shapes in chalk. So once we've drawn on our bone shapes, if there's anything we're unhappy with, just give it a bit of a wipe to lighten it, and then you can redraw them the way they should have been. And it's really difficult to get them all into perspective until you start actually drawing something. So put the bones on, make modifications, and once you're happy with all your positions, then we can start painting. So for this I've just used a white textile paint and a nice broad brush. It doesn't have to be a great quality brush because the finish of the bones in the film is supposed to look handmade. So as you can see in these stills from the film, they're not completely solid white areas. There's a little bit of black showing through to give that handmade look. Put a piece of plastic or newspaper inside the jacket as you start to actually paint so that the paint from the top layer doesn't soak through and get onto the back layer. But painting the bones on is pretty straightforward. I just paint around the outside edges of the shapes and it really doesn't matter how much paint you put on if you go too light you can just go back and put a bit more on over it but once I've painted around the edge of the shape as I want it you just go back and infill And as the paint starts to dry, you might find that it lightens up a little bit and you get a bit of the black showing through. You can always go back and just reapply another little bit of white over the top of it once it's dry and that will brighten up the white areas. Now while you're wearing the frock coat, if you find that the front keeps moving or opening and you're losing the symmetry of the bones, an easy way to fix that is to just apply some little Velcro patches onto the inside of it and you can apply as many of those down the front as you like and that will keep it 
always together in the same position, which actually helps paint your bones on as well, but when you're wearing it, it means that it will always look the way it should. Once I'd finished painting the frock coat, the next step was to do the tie. It has the first bone segment actually painted on the knot. Now, if you were to use a real tie and tie it properly, that knot's gonna come out in a slightly different position each time. So what I did is I went to a party store and I bought a cheap black tie. And this one's actually got a really cool zip feature. So the knot is permanently positioned and then you can just zip it up. So I was able to go on and paint all the bones onto the tie and they're gonna come out in exactly the right position every time. Now when it came to James Bond's cane, this is where I was set up. There were some photos posted online where Christie's Auctions actually sold off the costume that James Bond wore in Spectre. They showed some pictures of James Bond holding a cane with a skull topper like this. So once I finished the costume, I posted some pictures online and someone replied saying that the cane that I'd made is not actually the cane that he uses in that scene. It's used in a different part of the film. So I went back and had another look at the film and they're absolutely right. This cane is seen in detail in a scene further in the film. Now the one that he uses in the beginning of the film, you don't ever really get a good look at. Now because I've already made this cane, I think it actually goes really well with the costume. So I'm not too bothered that it's not screen accurate. For the skull topper, I freehand sculpted the skull in oil clay using a couple of brass dome nuts I had lying about for the eyes. In the film, this cane topper is actually quite ornate and it has an eagle on the forehead and some other patterns embossed all over it. I started sculpting in these details, but the closer I got it to the screen used look, the less I liked it. So I ended up trimming them all off and I just used a ballpoint pen to draw on a few designs that were a bit more simple and I liked a lot more. Now once my skull sculpture was complete, I put it neck down into a plastic container and then I just filled that container up with silicon. And once that dried, I was able to remove the silicon from the mold and make a little incision down the side so that I could get the sculpture out. I then bought a cheap wooden cane, I cut the head off it, painted it black and then I inserted the end into my mold, filled it up with polyurethane resin, let that set, and then I was able to open the mold up and I had my polyurethane skull molded onto the end of my cane. I then gave the skull topper a coat of satin black paint, the same paint that I'd used on the wooden part of the cane, and then I used a little bit of silver paint and a dry brush and lightly dry brushed the silver over the surface just to give it a little bit of a pewter look and to bring out some of the details. And there you have it. Just add some black dress shoes, black suit pants, a black dress shirt and a top hat and we've completed our James Bond Spectre Day of the Dead costume. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos.